Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we heard on Sunday, the first Sunday in Advent begins a new church year. And the first Sunday of Advent is determined by the Sunday closest to today, November 30th, St. Andrew's Day. That the beginning of the church year is anchored to St. Andrew's Day may be because he was the first disciple whom Jesus called, or it may just be coincidence, but either way, the church's year of grace begins and is tethered to Jesus' call to Andrew, follow me. Now, Andrew was originally a disciple of John the Baptist. In John 1.36, when the Baptist sees Jesus and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, two of John's disciples get up and follow after Jesus. And Jesus turns to them and asks them, What do you seek? And they ask him, Rabbi, where are you staying? To which Jesus responds with an invitation. Come and see. He invites them then to come and learn from him, to hear that he is the Messiah, to learn about the kingdom of God and repentance and true righteousness. John tells us then, in John 1 verse 40, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Now as a disciple of John the Baptist, Andrew would have been baptized by John for repentance and the forgiveness of sins. As a disciple of John, he and this unnamed disciple, maybe the Apostle John, the son of Zebedee, he would have conversed with the Baptist. In fact, that's what he and this other disciple were doing when John the Baptist looks up and points out to Jesus, this is after Jesus' baptism, of course, behold, the Lamb of God. By the fact that Andrew follows John's gaze, gets up and goes to Jesus asking where he is lodging for the night, that shows us that Andrew had true faith. He, once the Messiah is revealed to him, the Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Andrew gets up, goes to him, and learns from him. And... Jesus answers that inquisitiveness of his, where are you staying, with that invitation to come and see. And Andrew is so overcome with excitement that he first goes and gets his brother, Peter, and says, we have found the Messiah, which is translated to Christ, and brought him to Jesus. Now later, Peter and Andrew had returned to Galilee and to their profession, and that's where we see them in today's gospel lesson. And there, casting their nets out into the Sea of Galilee, Jesus, walking by the shore, sees them and says to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Andrew and Peter had learned from Christ before, but now Christ calls them into a more intimate fellowship with him. He calls them to be his disciples and eventually his apostles. Now Matthew writes that they left their nets and they followed Jesus immediately. Andrew heard and believed John the Baptist's testimony. He had heard and believed Jesus himself to be the Messiah. And so when Jesus tells him, follow me, be my student, be my pupil, learn from me, he drops it all and follows him. He became a disciple a student whom Jesus would prepare to be his apostle. And as his apostle, Andrew was then one of the twelve who would teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to hold fast to all that Jesus had commanded. As Lutherans, we confess in our Augsburg Confession that we remember the saints on a day like today, St. Andrew's Day, that we may follow their faith and good works according to our calling. So what do we learn about Andrew's faith? Well, as we said, he believed the Baptist, he was baptized, and he looked forward to the coming of the Messiah. And when the Messiah was made known to him, what did he do? He went after him. He learned from him. 
He stayed with him. And so we follow this example because this is the example that has been set forward for us in Scripture. We, too, follow Christ, learning from his word as it's taught to us. We follow and remain with Christ Jesus by reading his word, by meditating upon it, by thinking about it throughout the day and growing in our understanding and faith in it. We follow Jesus as Andrew did by expecting the advent of the Messiah, living with that in mind, that he is coming and coming soon. We must learn the gospel from Jesus each day of our lives and remain with him. For that's how we are prepared for his second advent. No matter what our vocations and callings are in this life, Jesus calls us, just as he called Andrew. He doesn't call you to be an apostle or minister, but he does call you and all Christians to be disciples, to learn from him, to be his students so that we can learn and live his doctrine each day. And we also then see an example, the example of Andrew's good, good works. Like I said, we don't follow his example of preaching and baptizing unless we've been called into the ministry, but we can follow Andrew's good work of confessing the faith to those around him. You know, what did Andrew do? He confessed to his brother Peter, we have found the Messiah, and he brought him to Jesus. When God gives us opportunities to confess that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, he also promises to give us the Holy Spirit so that we may confess him and bring others to him. That is, to the place where they can learn from Christ and hear him and become his disciples. Here, where the word is taught in its truth and purity. And look at Andrew. Look how joyful he was at the fact that he had found the Messiah. That is the joy that the Holy Spirit wants to give us as well. Because we too have found the Messiah like Andrew. Not in a, not in a person of Jesus amongst us but in the person of Jesus speaking to us in his word. Today, we remember and commemorate St. Andrew, and we do so by following Christ, by becoming and being his lifelong disciples and students, and whenever God gives us the opportunity, confessing Christ to others, not because we have to, not out of compulsion or coercion, but out of that joy that by grace we have found the Messiah, the Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who takes away our sins and makes us fit by faith to dwell with Christ in this life and in the life of the world to come. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which far surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.